Let's talk about what's going on with Elsie's rifle. I wanted to get rolls, I wanted to spend time with this. Cause it's in special company, elite company. It's a rare case of not what you can do for a weapon, but what a weapon can do for you. And what I mean by that, usually you need certain stats up when a weapon drops. Like you're trying to get that extra range or stability or handling any way possible, but not with this one. It's just nice to have. And I have some really cool things to show you. And I'm not sure if it's ever been covered before in depth like this. I mean, specifically I'm talking about Zen moment here. I'm gonna show you that working, what it's doing and just how great it is on Elsie's. It's classified as a stat monster. And that type of weapon, when Destiny players say that, it's breaking the mold of the overall stats in relation to its peers. Like, historically, it's been reserved for trials and raid weapons. Really, like when you take Igneous Hammer versus other 120s, clear difference. All the stats are fairly high. It's like a staircase. It just rises up. Nothing's really low while other stats being super high. Just all around really beefy stats. Out of band compared to the other weapons. Like, even something like comparing it to a crafted round robin where... You can pick each stat, each barrel, each masterwork, like it's still behind. Or something like Summoner versus Annulling Hunger, like same range and handling, but much better stability. Like these types of weapons, these elite weapons are gonna have 20, 30, 40 stat points than similar ones, it's crazy. And for Elsie's, the biggest competition, I mean, just for any high impact pulse is Messenger. Like that's always been the standard. And even though Messenger has six more range, look at the other stats. And I also have some other high impacts in here to compare as well. With the core stats, the base stats, with aim assist included, it has 31 more stat points than Messenger. And that's a big deal just out of the gate because Messenger, again, is the standard. And when you start comparing it to others, it's a lot more than that. At base, the range is fine at 60, where it's at. Like, let's get that right. Let's get that straight. It's gonna be fine. It can be added to, it's going to be added to. This is okay. But the bread and butter is the accumulation of the out of norm stability, handling, reload, and aim assist. In simple terms, look at this one. Do you know how big of a deal it is, how hard it is for a weapon to be able to get 60 stat points and all the core stats? Seriously, the next time that you're on, look at your weapons, even the ones that are with you, not equipped. Maybe it's an SMG, a pulse, whatever. Usually there's gonna be a super low stat or not a good stat because you wanted to make another stat better. Maybe it's a multi mock or a scalar potential. Whatever weapon it is, it's gonna have that quality. And on some weapons, some things can't be saved or helped. And historically with this class, low inherent handling, reload, and Elsie's just bypasses that. So it's all gravy from the start. Super big deal, the base core stats that it has. And in the beginning of this video, I made it a point in a lot of the gameplay to not have on loaders, to not have on targeting. This is just the base weapon going. Cause you'll see it's 42 base handling versus a 24 or 26 handling stat on the others. Like you can actually get out of sprint at base and get two taps. And with the other ones, you're gonna eat in alive. Like I'm doing it versus SMGs. I'm doing it versus other weapons. It's a very special thing. And it's things that you don't really think about. So from here, it's all about highlighting strengths, making them better, whichever way you want or whichever way you can. The bottom line is like this stat line on a high impact pulse with 17 zoom, very rare. Game's been out for a long time, very rare. Let's take a second, and I'm sorry for this, it takes a, a little bit, but it's super important for the rest of the weapon, it really is. It's got deterministic recoil and there's five recoil patterns it can have. So the base recoil is 73, it trails way left with each shot. In the middle, it levels out a little bit. It tries to come back, but it will trail. Then we have 83, and that's with a recoil barrel, like extended. Believe it or not, this might actually be the best barrel for it when I tested them all, because what you'll see, it legit stopped trailing, but you'll notice like the burst wants to come back to the right. It's more central. A huge upgrade from base. We have 88, which is a counterbalance mod added to base. It's similar to base, it's just better grouped. Not the best, not the worst. 98, it's getting up there to where 83 is. It still trails a little bit, but more central and 100 with Arrowhead. Feels like it's tied for the best. Not too far off of 83 and 88, but the main goal is you need to get this thing off of base. Whatever you gotta do. I actually prefer 83, but with the other ones I'm fine with, they're all okay. I like them all, but 73, get off of it. And throughout this review, it is more PvP centered because it is built different for PvP. And at the end, I do have some PvE things. In the third column, we have Feeding Frenzy, Zen Moment, Repulsor Brace, Loose Change, Keep Away, Under Over, Rewind Rounds. The final column, Frenzy, Destabilizing Rounds, Kill Clip, Desperate Measures, Head Seeker, Desperado, Adrenaline Junkie. Elsie's rifle brings out a perk combo like I've never seen before, felt before, and that's Zen Moment Headseeker, and I believe it is the overall best role, but there's a lot more we're going to talk about today. Like, I'm a sucker for Zen Moment Kill Clip, like on this horror's least. Elsie's can run Zen Moment Kill Clip, but Zen paired with Headseeker, it's a crazy good interaction on this weapon because of its stats. I think that it really runs through Zen Moment, honestly. And you may have seen this role talked about, but I want to show you why. 
and I want to show you what's happening. All the stats that Elsie's has really takes it over the edge. Like Zen Moment, cause damage with this weapon, it reduces recoil and flinch over time. These high impacts just by heart, are dueling weapons in the Crucible, a 0.67 TCK, one of the fastest TCKs in the game at base, and you can do it from a mile away. With the sandbox change, the sandbox philosophy of wanting more crits, more primary play, a 0.67, really good start. As you land shots, you get flinch resist, and this is applied multiplicatively. The more sources you have, the better anti-flinch, the stronger that it is. So if you have high resilience, tier 10, high stability, multiple unflinching mods paired with Zen Moment, that's the best outcome. And if you do have 100 resilience, and this weapon has the stats to back it up, you, you can get high stability with Elsie's rifle. 60, 70, 80, let's take 65 stability with triple unflinching, paired with resilience here, 52% flinch resist, and then Zen Moment is gonna be on top of that. It could be 60% or more. It's really, really good. And that's just landing shots getting into a duel. It stacks to five times. As you land shots on a pulse, a hit gets you 1.5 stacks. Gets you really quickly to max stack. Within the two burst, you're at max. As you're shooting, you're getting flinch reduction, but we have this visual weapon shake and visual weapon recoil bounce reduction. So as you're landing shots, getting less recoil, an illusion of better stability. So let's see that in action. When you notice them side by side, you can kind of see it. And the stat line on this LCs that you're seeing is 65 range, 75 stability. So I'm showing a high stability stat. But when you overlap them, you can see Zen Moment in play. The dot that has the X around it, that's a Zen Moment one because it's getting a hit. But you see the base one, it's more opaque. It's the brighter one. You see how that reticle bounce is very noticeable in comparison. And when you really take it frame by frame really slow and show it, it's even better than it looks there. Because once you start getting into looking at just one burst, going through that burst, how much stickier it looks, how much more stable it looks. And you can consider, well, a couple things. One, without Zen Moment, the reticle bounce, that third bullet could actually just miss. It could trail off. Zen Moment's keeping it tight. And collectively, you have this more stable shot. And while you're taking fire, you take less flinch. It's a big deal. Big deal in the sandbox with an emphasis on crits and primary play. But then we start adding in and bringing in Headseeker. And I called it the ultimate dueling weapon because the stats on Elsie's, you add in Headseeker to this. Body shots landed with this weapon increase precision damage for a short time and aim assist for a short time. And Headseeker on a high impact, it allows it to be much more forgiving. A very consistent perk. And Elsie's is really, really driving this combo. Because when you take something like this, I mean, this is small bore ricochet, Zen Moment range masterwork, 82 range, 72 stability. And up to this point, I haven't brought it up. Big reminder, we'll take this roll right here. When these two perks are enhanced later, enhanced Zen Moment, enhanced Headseeker, their enhanced trait is they both passively give plus five stability. So you'd actually be looking at 82 range, 82 stability. So just going all in, I mean, tier 10 resilience, you have on targeting, you have on unflinching, going all in, 82 range, 82 stability, 42 handling, 60 reload, 65 aim assist, because you're adding in the targeting and you're adding in the plus 10 aim assist that Headseeker's giving, and you're getting more than 53% flinch resist because Zen Moment is adding on to that. So we go back and look at this, all the traits of if you were receiving fire. Headseeker held me out with the aim assist. A ton of aim assist for this style of weapon. And no, not like that. I mean, when most think of aim assist, they think, oh, controller. But like, it's MNK2. Like, this is a good thing. The shots are ice cold on a rope. Extremely sticky. Like in these clips, I mean, versus ARs, like a summoner, taking the less flinch from an auto rifle, the less recoil bounce. It's cold blooded. It really is. And as a pure dueling weapon, the 0.67, achieving that is a little bit easier with Zen Moment Headseeker together. And when you have this role, or if you have Zen Moment on this thing, but specifically Zen Headseeker, it is tangible. You can feel it. You can see it. And it's one of those things, like seriously, when I was playing with it, like in those duels versus the summoner, I mean, immediately I think, yeah, that's different. That's just a whole different thing. It's tangible. So a very impressive role in this weapon that I wanted to cover in depth, like the majority of the video, because it has the stats to make this type of combo complete. And it's on a high impact. That's what we can't forget, on a high impact. Unheard of. Some weapons can get close to this, as I started with, but the big deal, the high impact frame, dueling at a distance, a monster. It's a dueling monster. But that isn't to say that other perks aren't phenomenal because they are. I wouldn't get hung up on Zen Headseeker. I just think it's really, truly special on this weapon. But there's other roles that I'm keeping and other roles that I'm looking for. We're not done yet. I do encourage you to look for various roles, try to see what vibes with you. Even things like Desperado, and you know what? I'm tired of ignoring Desperado, and I'm tired of others ignoring Desperado because it's a good perk, especially with the stats on Elsie's. A lot do prefer Kill Clip because you don't need a headshot final blow, but Desperado, it's actually a faster TTK. The base is 0.67, 
Choke CTK is 0 0.6, Desperado is 0.55. It's just that you need the headshot final blow, but don't shy away from it. It's got high stability. It has Zen Moment in the third, and that could be less reticle bounce, anti-flinch to help you land that crit. It could be keep away, the extra accuracy at a distance helping you land that headshot final blow. It's a good perk. We have under over. It's 20% more damage to overshield, 20% more damage to woven male body shots. This makes the pulse still 49 per crit. 147 per burst, it just washes overshields. Do not sleep on under over, do not undervalue it, do not think of it as a throwaway perk, especially on a high impact weapon, on a high impact pulse, because in the sandbox, there is a lot more primary play. And this does lead to more rifts, more woven male, more overshields. And a reminder, if you see a Warlock in a Rift, if they're in a Rift, that means it's a constant overshield, and that means you have constant under-over damage. Just shredding them, and even pairing them together. Under-over Desperado, but Elsie's has the same combination. I was able to get on a Rift with under-over Desperado, and the results are comical. Just absolutely shredding. There's things like this. I have an under-over kill clip roll. You can deal with overshields, you can chain kills with kill clip, and under-over on a high-impact pulse, again... You saw it with that Desperado Messenger. You can get under over kill clip on over shields. And we've all been there. There's a little standoff. They pop their Bastion Shield or they pop a Rift. They challenge you. And they're very confident. Like, look at homie right here. Super confident. But they get dropped. Absolutely shreds them. And it completes a two tap. There's things like keep away kill clip. And enhanced keep away is going to up that range even more. Like, it just all gets better. All of these roles can and do well. Only you know your play style. I prefer a dueling role on this opposed to a chaining roll like Kill Clip. But that isn't to say if I get perfect Zen Moment Kill Clip roll, I just won't run it because it's too good. And, you know, one more thing, there is Desperate Measures. That that can work, especially on this one because it has high damage. You get 10% more damage after a kill with the weapon, so you could 4 crit one body for a 0.6. Totally fine. You can also get a melee kill or a grenade kill to get to a 2 stack for 20% more damage. And a 3 stack is 30% more, but... I feel on LCs, I think Headseeker's going to be better. Kill Clip's going to be better. And when you look at the Barrel Mag and Mashwork, nothing's going to hurt it. Like, all of it's fine. Usually, you need something like Full Bore. You need certain Barrels, Mashworks. But again, it's just kind of all on top. You're highlighting strengths. But if you get Full Bore, it's okay to add on. Even when you do take away the handling, here's what's crazy. Even when you do put Full Bore on and take its base handling, a reduction down to 37, it is still better than every other high impact pulse's base handling. Like that's wild. It still has six more handling than Messenger and Messenger hasn't even put on full bore yet. So yeah, it's fine. Preferably mine would look something like small bore or hammer forge with ricochet Zen headseeker range masterwork. And again, enhanced 82 range, 82 stability, but the barrel can go a number of ways. If I get arrowhead with another roll, I'm gonna be happy with it. Extended, I'm gonna be happy with it. And real quick for PVE, it is built for PVP because it is built different. But there are some roles here. I mean, we've seen Repulsor destabilizing. It's good on a Void, Titan, Hunter, Warlock, and PVE. You can mess with Desperate Measures if you want. Very easy to get a good clean 30% more damage stack on this thing. Keep it going. I ended up getting the two that I wanted for PVE, Repulsor destabilizing, and then Rewind Rounds Frenzy. And I'm simple like that. I wanted this roll. It's a simple roll. To deal with it, it gets even more snappy with Frenzy. 15% more damage, and with Rewind Rounds, you just shoot until they go down. End of story. I like that quality about it. And with Void Surges, or Void Shields, the roll gets a lot better. So this is something that I wanted, I'm glad that I got it. But it is truly an elite weapon, and it's one that should be used for a long time. So try different rolls, try a Keep Away Kill Club, Keep Away Headseeker, Zen Moment. Find one that vibes with you, that makes you deadly. But as I stated, with how Elsie's is built and the perks that it has, Zen Moment and Headseeker, Combining its stats with those two perks, it's something that is great. It is tangible. You can feel it. Like I said, after duels, you think, yeah, that's pretty sticky. That's different. So get one. Get one that you like. Be ready to enhance it. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. Let's talk about Elsie's rifle down below. What roles are you liking? What roles do you recommend? And it is worth noting that since it is Void, you can pair it with Conditional Finality. You can pair it with multi mock, other really good kinetics. Whereas Messenger has a different set of weapons you can pair it with. Let's talk about it down below. Thank you for watching. And until the next one, I am Cool Guy.